All right, so we're checking out another soldering iron from Secure. This is their new, uh, I guess, small electronics soldering iron lineup. Uh, this is the S60. There's another version called the S20. Looks the same, but uh, that version can only go up to a maximum output power of 20 watts, whereas this one can go up to 60 watts. Comes in a nice zippered case here, just like their other small soldering irons, and but this one here has even smaller tips for those really tiny electronics. Take a look inside here. There's the iron. Get a little stand here for the iron. Got power supply. Get a USB-C cable, so that's that power supply is obviously USB, and you have a USB-C connection on the side. It is a power delivery, we'll talk about that here in a second. Get some stickers, and you get the instruction manual. Get three different tips that are included, and these are quite a bit smaller than their standard tips. Okay, so this is their standard small tip here. And this is uh, what it looks like compared to their regular tips here. This is the larger tips for their regular irons, and this one is obviously for much smaller electronics. You can see, much smaller. You get a small version of their sort of chisel tip, and you get a small version here of their uh, bent tip here. So obviously these come out, they just kind of hold in place there for the case and they just stick inside here like so. You just push them in and they'll just lock into place. Obviously when it's hot you don't want to touch that and you'll burn yourself, but obviously when it's off and cooled down you can then pop it in and out fairly easily. And you can see the other side of the tip there that goes into the iron itself. So this is the power supply that they include. It's pretty basic. Uh, it has limited power. It's uh, so obviously for power delivery, you have five volts at three amps, nine volts at two amps, and twelve volts at one and a half amps. And so, so twelve volts at one and a half amps is eighteen watts. It does say on their product page that this can go up to thirty watts. So I think that is an error. Um, this obviously, as labeled here, it can only go up to 18 watts. So, um, if you want to go up to, if you want to get the maximum 60 watts that the this iron can is capable of, you're going to want to use a aftermarket power supply. So this one here is the Anchor. In this case, it's a 737. This can go up to 120 watts. So it's overkill for this iron, but there's a lot of obviously 60 watt USB-C power delivery power supplies out there. I'll just link some of them down in the video description if you want to check them out. But you're going to need one of these that can output a higher, um, basically, at that 12 volts, a higher amp to get that 60 uh, 60 watts total if you want the full output power of the iron. And that is going to be important if, uh, for whatever reason, you need to put a lot of heat into something. Because um, as if you don't have enough power, as the heat leaves the tip and goes into the board or whatever you're soldering, then if you don't have the power output is not high enough, the uh, tip of the iron will cool down uh, quicker than you would expect or would need. And so for some of those bigger jobs, you're going to need uh, more output power. Now for something like this where it's geared towards these sort of really tiny electronics, um, not sure how much of a game breaker that is because you're not necessarily going to need a lot of power um, in that particular case. If there's a case that you might need much more power, let me know what that situation would be. Um, not really familiar with small electronic soldering, so, so I'm not really sure what cases or scenarios I might be missing out on. But yeah, it's um, you know pretty standard. You just plug in your USB-C cable into here and the other into the power supply. We'll go ahead and do that, turn it on, and, and do some test uh, soldering here. Okay, so for this example, I'm just going to desolder um, maybe some of these smaller components off of here to see how well this tiny tip will work on some of these little tiny components for uh, soldering. Obviously, it's like, you know, small electronics repair, so something like this would probably be typical, some of these capacitors. And then I'm going to be using uh, uh, the uh, digital microscope that I reviewed a uh, month or so ago, and you'll see this in, under the microscope and magnified, so you'll get an idea of how this operates. Okay, so for the iron itself, pretty standard. You got a nice little screen here, an OLED screen. You can flip that over if, you, if you're if you left-handed, for example, but it's uh, defaulted for right-handers. 
uh, two buttons here, standard two button operation, works the same way as uh, their other irons. Uh, you can see my previous videos if you want to see a tutorial on how to go through the menus and everything like that, it's all the same. And you can see your max 12 volts here, and we'll just plug that in. And it should power on, but it should not turn heat to the tip yet. A little uh, tone there, turn it, it's turned on, that's the temperature here, and you can see it says stop, which means it's not turned, it's not actually heating the tip there. And you saw when it powered up, it showed the firmware version, like 1.11. You can obviously use a USB-C port there, plug it into your computer, and down um, update the firmware on this one. When new ones come out, they'll be on their support page at the secure website. All right, so to turn it on, you just um, long press the A button here, so this, like this. Changes from stop to work. You can see it goes right up to 300 Celsius right away. To adjust the temperature, it looks like it overshot a little bit. Yeah, 300, 340, should, should come down now. To adjust the temperature, set, the set temperature of 300, right, that's the default. And to go up to 350, which is probably what I more would prefer, it'll shoot back up. It's, it kind of looks like it goes up a little higher and then it'll settle back down. So it uh, looks like it's a little bit high. It's going over the 350 for a fair amount here, it's still around 400. But it should settle around 350, that's the set temperature, but it looks like it's pretty high right now. You can see the voltage there. All right, so we're gonna remove some of these capacitors. Gonna put some flux over here so that it'll be able to come off. Gonna use some tweezers. And let's see how this does. So, here, so this one's a little bit on the bigger side, and it is, it is moving, oh there it goes, so it took a little bit longer than I thought it should have taken. Right, there it goes. So this um, component's probably about a millimeter in length, pretty small. Let's put some more flux over here and try this other, these other smaller components. See if I can move the uh, parts off of there without even using the tweezer. All right, let's try and move this one off of here. So not that easy. I'm going to put some more flux in here. And I'm going to raise the temperature to 400. Perhaps my temperature is a little bit too low. Let's see if I can try it from the side here, try and get both contact points. All right, so I'm going to try and push from the other side with the tweezers and heat it up. And there it finally goes. Let's try this capacitor over here. It looks like you have to put the iron on both contact points or on the side and then push it over. And heat up both of them. And there it goes. Yeah, so I'm obviously not a small electronics repair expert, so I'm not really sure how good this iron is compared to some other ones. Um, it operates similarly to their standard irons, and uh, it'll be very easy to use. I think that my lack of uh, skill in terms of like how to how to deal with small electronic components like these is, you know, doesn't really help in terms of determining whether this is a good iron or not. It does seem to work, but like you do have to, um, you know, be able to know where to apply the heat correctly and. and and perhaps I'm not using the correct tip. I think maybe the bent tip might be a little bit better on these small boards because if you're coming in at an angle with that bent tip, it's easier to get more uh, contact to more surface area to apply that heat. And also perhaps the fact that um, I'm only at 18 watts, that could be an issue. So I would highly recommend going to the lar or getting a larger power supply to be able to apply 
more heat because I, I did notice temperature drops as I was holding the tip on the components as the heat was going into the board. So I think that 18 watts might be a limiting factor. So things to consider. Uh, link down in the video description if you want to check it out. That'll do it for this video. Talk to you guys in the next one.